Hi, Yanis. Hello. <laughs> Uh, today we will speak about your piece, uh, Unmute. Uh, can you give us brief uh, background information? Who commissioned and for whom it was uh, composed? Well, uh, Unmute was a collaboration with this choreographer, Karen Levy, who um, I've known for many years, and we were trying to find a, a project to work on. And uh, it was a partly commission from Slachwerk, Den Haag, Percussion The Hague, which is now called HIT, uh, it's their new name, um, to, to make a piece for dance. Uh, and um, no, actually it wasn't to make a piece for dance. They, they just wanted to do work with me. And then I I thought, um, let's do something with sensors to and work with uh, Karen Levy. Um, we'd worked in the past I mean, sorry, I've done, I done. I did a piece in the past that used uh, video tracking, uh, and I wanted to explore that a bit more in a way of um, the using the space, um, mapping the space as if it's really a kind of a time thing in the score, so so we can sort of track through sounds as you move through the space. Um, and this was a piece I did like in 2010 or so. So I was looking at the new technologies of what we can do um, beyond video tracking. Video tracking is is great for some things, um, but for finer movement, it's not. Um, and um, sometimes it has difficulty um, separating different people, different users. So, um, so then I started to look at uh, different technologies, and um, and then one of the technologies we we thought about was using these uh, motion sensors that that are on the body. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's that's how we that's how we first sort of conceived of uh, of the idea, and then how to translate that into uh, a language that works for dance and a language that works also for music. And, and there was um, four participants, right? In the piece, there are five. Five, five participants. Yeah, yeah. So there's three dancers and two percussionists. Um, and um, I mean that's you know the piece. Um, let's 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 go back a bit. It's sort of it's once we've once we realize that okay these sensors you know we can use them on the hands and specifically we use these. Uh, we found these myo sensors, um, uh, the company of which went uh, liquidated in the meantime. Uh, so it was this, they made this beautiful sensor um, that tracks also muscle movement, um, but because it didn't have the sort of commercial success that the, that the kind of financial backers were after, they thought they would break through into really the corporate world and it didn't really work there. It's too, in a sense, it was too sophisticated for that. Um, they sort of folded. So, so they, so a lot of these actual sensors were in the sort of secondhand market, but then you had to hack the software yourself and sort of uh, make something usable with that. So once, once we got that going, um, and we realized, um, in a way, the best way for us to use it was on the hands rather than on, on any other part of the body and on one hand, not two hands, which sometimes people use it. Um, we got in this idea of having a, a sort of a group of performers that were both, um, you know, musicians. So, you know, music, let's say musicians that were comfortable moving and dancers that could use their ears. Because um, in a kind of multidisciplinary project like that, um, uh, it's 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 great. It, you have to find people who are comfortable in these in both these media. Um, and you know, from my point of view as as the composer, I really wanted dancers who who could really hear what's going on. And that's it's not as easy as you think because. Uh, you know, if you write something that has, you know, that's contrapuntal, let's say, that's got different layers, let's say you have three people and each one is controlling a different thing, um, you have to be able to know, oh, that's my sound, 
I'm controlling that sound. So, so yeah, so casting it, you know, we had to really try and find people who, who, you know, could do that. And still it was notable, noticeable differences between dancers and musicians because, uh, uh, sometimes not good and bad, you know, like it's, I find it also interesting how dancers respond to the sound more intuitively, more, um, let's say, uh, physically, a musician might sort of listen to a sound and want to try and control it and, and is sort of thinking about what they're doing, listening, what they're doing with the sound, whereas the dancer, um, works you might want to work on much larger gestures mm -hmm. so i find that i find that quite interesting uh um and he, i even found myself sometimes during rehearsal saying to um saying to the musicians i uh you know do it how the dancers how this dancer is doing it because they're they have a sort of a slightly nonchalant approach to the sound so they're just letting the sound be it as it as it is but uh, right, focused on the, the their movement. So I found I found it interesting these differences. Um, but yeah, it was it was not it was not an easy process um, to to because because you had to really uh, firstly discover what's possible, you know, with with these things. Then um, my role as a composer was was also a bit like an instrument maker having to find the limits of the instrument, how and what it will control, um, and constantly mapping it to the, to let's say the movement characteristics of the, of the people. Um, and for the, for the performers themselves, you know, um, there was a lot of insecurity involved, you know, oh, really? is this me? Uh, you know, why is it doing this? Uh, you know, like it's not working, you know, these kind of, these kind of things. So, um, but yeah, it was uh, having, you know, having this kind of mixed group of, so three dancers and two percussionists, like musicians, percussionists. Um, yeah. So um, shall I talk about the concept a bit? Yeah, or exactly. the... Yes, yes, yes. What is the main point, right? Yeah, so so, I mean, what once we established, you know, the kind of the form we wanted to work on, we we, um, if the image came to the mind of this idea of um, they're actually speaking with their with their hands because I like the idea of of uh, of doing um, using all the sounds in the piece or most of the sounds in the piece related to the human voice or to the voice, um, and the and that the hand became the only way of like speaking. So, yeah. so that's why this whole idea of like mute, unmute. Um, and uh, I think the original title was mute songs and then somehow became unmute. And it was funny because that whole, that whole word for us was quite strange until uh, COVID came. I mean, that's just COVID was much, was a few years after. And then we're so used to this. Oh, unmute yourself, mute yourself on, on, on like, uh, COVID calls on, uh, zoom calls and things. But, um, but yeah, so it was this idea of like the hands are really speaking. Um, and, and then we sort of got into a bit into this world of, of, uh, you know, languages and what, you know what could be a language i mean i myself have been interested in this idea of uh the language and music or is music a language is is language was originally music these kind of ideas um and they surface in the piece in the sense that um um we wanted to let's say play on in the gray areas between uh what could be music what could be thought of as communication you know like is the is the let's say i metaphor or idea we're creating on stage the idea of like uh people not having found themselves not being able to speak you know communicating with these uh with these gestures which are being translated into sound so there was a lot of like uh, these kind of ideas within the piece, and then we, and then we got to the idea of of um, uh, languages which have been um, 
uh, extinct or close to extinction or danger, you know, and then the whole environmental aspect of uh, how quickly, you know, language is, is um, languages are being lost partly yes. through technology, partly through modern, you know, m modern um, society, environmental reasons, many reasons, actually. Yeah. You already mentioned a lot of ideas, right, about the peace. And but was there like one main central message that you want to co communicate or you group want to communicate with the peace? Um, was there one central message? I'm just trying to think if uh, how I can summarize. Um, I th I think it, it was it's this idea of like the maybe the um, what's it, the the need to to communicate something something like that the need to communicate whether it's with words whether it's with gesture whether it's with sounds uh so and and i feel that's the sort of um that is the kind of let's say emotional feeling you get watching the piece is this is is like this extraordinary length of being taken to utter something uh, and i think that's what i also was was fascinated why by i mean it, on the one hand you could be it's it could be a, quite a heavy subject you know in the sense that it's it's uh about the loss of this ability to, to to communicate what we lose in the world, but there's also playfulness of it too, you know, of like finding new ways to to communicate. Right. So yeah. And um what was unexpected, right? Uh, sensorial experience, what you want to create for uh, for um, viewer or the person who who was in the show. Um, I mean, for like in the first place, as I said, it was kind of a uh, a difficult but interesting rehearsal process because um, it's such a beautiful, let's say, uh, intersection between this this kind of sound and movement. The fact that you're moving and your movement is creating the sound, it's like you you think to yourself, ah shouldn't shouldn't dance always be like this you know like it, it somehow uh there, there was something so intertwined uh and organic about that whole process so for the for the performers there's this kind of immediacy of that which was so beautiful uh to work with i wanted some of that to communicate obviously to the audience that the audience understands very quickly that there is no difference between kind of movement and and playing you know that that it's all connected um so i mean also what we try and did in the performance uh, from a sensorial point of view is we have a quad like a, let's say a surround sound setup so that you also sense the movement of the sound as the as the often with on this plane I would oh sorry let's let's I'll say it in words <laughs> on the horizontal plane uh, around the let's uh, let's say around the body um, I would map that sometimes in a spatial way so that so that when a move when a dancer moves from like left to right or uh, or back to front you sense it in the in the how the sound is moving in the space as if the dancer is like uh, let's say shoving the sound waves from one place to another and and that was also really interesting to try and create that sort of sensorial experience also for the for the audience yeah so so it's a kind of it's a kind of interact in, interaction that um that uh that i wanted to that it's really for the performers but i wanted to, to communicate to the audience as well right it's it's i mean it's fu what's funny is that you know like we talk about this of course playing an instrument is also moving your body and creating sound in some way you know that uh but this but this sort of removal of both like well actually that's not true because we did have instruments in the piece we have these these metal plates which are hanging which are used um as kind of sound creation objects as well where which the, the uh the sound is manipulated by the by the by processing the, that sound um 
but um but this is yeah this is kind of very primal way of representing kind of sound in a in a way but with these plates um but the but the way that it that this is a, a traditional instrument is dislocated is removed from the body uh, so it's all the, the 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 musicians and the dancers are playing air instruments in a sense kind of uh, like uh, focuses that fact on on the relation between gesture and sound got it and it's <clears throat> this piece around maybe sort of 40 minutes long right yeah it's about an hour actually yeah i, I, think, I think it's it started actually it started very long we i think the first version was about 80 minutes because we wanted things to be very slow um and actually we got uh, a bit of negative feedback from the first audience critics partly because we were performing in really traditional dance festivals and they were like didn't really get it um and then we the piece developed and we thought okay we made it a bit more compact i think it's about yeah maybe it's about 50 minutes 60 minutes but i have to check it may, maybe it is shorter i'm not sure yes. And, and drum pulji, right? Right. This is long. This is long. Yeah. This is long period. Are there some drum pulji inside the piece? Yes. Yeah. The the there is. There's there's um. In a way, the the piece, um. The, let's say, the, the, there are several scenes in it. Like, and the scenes are connected. But uh, um, I can summarize summarize it like this. In the beginning of the piece. It's sort of this empty landscape. We see these, these, uh, these sheets, metal sheets. The the performers come from the audience as if you know they're part of the audience. They come onto the stage, and then, um, it, as if they're finding themselves in this kind of uh, alienating situation where where speech is only possible with with the hand gestures. And gradually, you know, there's uh, more and more connection between the, the dancers. There, there's this beautiful parts in, where, uh, which where there's a lot of this contact also movement between them. So there's that the, you know they're they're pulling each other, and it's and and the sort of sounds are morphing by the, how they're pulling each other. But eventually, the the one by one, these these sheets are lowered. These, these metal sheets are lowered and taken away. And there is something tragic about that because it's somehow throughout the piece, you connect the idea of these lost languages with these plates being gradually removed one by one. So, so, and, and by the end of the piece, there's, uh, oh yeah, that's it. There's the, one of the percussionists um mariana she sings she she's um i mean it's one of the last things that happens is is um she sings a song so it's the first time we hear a, a voice being real voice um and the song is actually a song i wrote based on a, a lost language it's called so one it's 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 a it's a language from the pacific somewhere uh yeah. that was lost in the 19th century so I made a kind of poem using the the words that have been left, you know, by by from there, and uh, so she sings this song, and and so, so that's so you could say this this like meaning about the the loss of language is sort of heightened in the dramaturgy a bit. Good, and, and and how long it took for you to compose, and what kind of stages you go through? Yeah, I mean, this was. Uh, it's it, it. What I did was the first that we did a kind of. Uh, I took a, like a month or two, and I wrote like some sketches of things. This is how, this is often how I compose, you know, especially bigger pieces. I might write, test little things, a uh, test um scenes, um, and and it was one thing writing the actual kind of sounds that I wanted, the sort of, and the other thing mapping them on the bodies and getting the performers to play them that was harder you know to find you know and for that i really needed to be in the studio i mean i obviously had these senses in my at home in my studio and i was i was trying them out 
but then to communicate that to to rehearse that with a it was a complicated process so um i had to be in the sort of uh, rehearsals a lot most of the time in fact which isn't very common for me um because i prefer in in these sort of in dance or theater pieces i prefer to just write the music and then you know come every now and again to the rehearsal and not but it's i was there quite a lot like tweaking everything dealing with all the computer stuff um so it took about uh took about four four months three four months really like work to to get everything done and changing a lot up to the last minute um and you know it's 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 still i have the feeling that uh and i you know it's i'm i it's i'm still really excited about the project because of the feeling i i remember as i said even if it was very difficult process i had the feeling that we managed to make something totally new that that you know ni neither of us the choreographer nor me um had ever um, you know it's it was a kind of uh um outside the comfort zone kind of creative experience but we managed to make something really interdisciplinary uh which i, I was i still was excited about and actually i did a couple of pieces after that actually no sorry, i did one piece after that uh uh with this idea called hands um but i still feel as though uh it's something I want to use again. This, these, this kind of technology, um, and take it and see and take it a bit further uh, somehow. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and what kind of softwares do you use? So you use those, right? Uh, those, uh, it's a hardware, right? Yeah. So what it is, it's it's like a sensor, and the yeah. sensor has um, it had has something like about fifteen data points. Yeah. So. Um, I mean, it has actually it it tracks each of the muscles of the fingers, um, and and it tracks also you know like how how much you are um, uh, let's say stressing the muscle, so you you know by by like like squeezing your fist, you get very clear, like and and, and like moving each finger, so and then there's um, then there's like X Y Z position. But and there's accelerometer, so uh, and all of these data points, especially the accelerometers, you can put like a uh, threshold, like triggers. So you can turn these things into triggers, or you can turn things into um, like uh, just yeah, zero to one kind of tra trackers, like like a, um, so I, I converted everything to MIDI, in fact, so to turn it into like. Uh, um, and then, so we used this kind of complicated because we had, uh, because we had five of them. Uh, we, we needed, let's say, because most computers can only take one or two Bluetooth, let's say, inputs from this from the MIOS. They can only, so we had to. We got like three Raspberry Pis, um, and did the Bluetooth uh, protocol through the Raspberry Pis. Uh, so we had a box of these Raspberry Pis on the stage, picking up all the Bluetooth data. So that was good. It was also close to the dancers. Then the then we sent all the data to a uh, computer running touch designer. That's because uh, um, the the programmer I was working with, uh, Darian Brito, uh, that's, that's the... the program he likes working with a lot so i mean it's 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 a you can do it with max also but it's basically like uh just organizing all the data mapping all the data so he, he made some very nice software for um for basically mapping each of these data points uh and um and being able to record the data as well in, in order to reuse later and uh so once we map the data we sent it as MIDI uh, to uh, this this sound processing system called Kima, uh, which is um, which is this uh, software d designed by Symbolic Sound in America, uh, and it's basically a hardware unit called Pacarana. Uh, so it's basically a computer 
which uh, does all the sound processing. So the, so so actually, we had three types of community. We had the we had the the Raspberry Pis. We had a like a Mac doing all the uh, touch design and stuff, and then sending to Kima, which did all the sound processing. So that's uh, yeah. And um, and then the sound material. It was electronic, right? I still remember. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's apart from the apart from the sound of the metal plates. Yes. So we had like we had like five metal plates, uh, each with a like a microphone in the back, and uh, sometimes I would use the sound of the metal plates and process it, yes. process it with hand gestures. Uh, uh, but I would also, uh, but other than that, it was mostly all like samples and also. At the end, process voice, but mostly samples and voice samples uh, that were being like granulated, processed, synthesized. This kind of. Uh, well, and, uh, are there some compositional principles that you would use dealing with sound? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I used a lot of granulation in different ways. Granulation is is you know when you sort of, uh, um, you know, sort of cut up a sound into these particles and move through the particles in different ways and color the particles in different ways. Um, and But also resynthesis. So the resynthesis is where um, I had, like, let's say, voice samples, yes. um, people speaking, sometimes these lost languages, recordings of these lost languages, and and they're synthesized, like they're turned into, into like, um, uh, sine waves that's the basic Fourier analysis and then uh I I would sort of I could move through them morph them in different ways so so that's the two basic things I was doing like synthesis and granular good yeah. and can you imagine the same work right but um with the same choreography and with the same sound but without uh, uh sensors Ah, interesting. Um, yeah, I mean that's an interesting question because you know that the, then we go back into that tr more traditional way of like thinking about um, like we see dancers moving and there is a relation between their movement and the sound, but they're not creating it. They're just you know like like syncing or responding to it. Um, yeah, you. You could more or less do the same piece, but but it would be it would be um you 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 yeah you would think why are they mimicking the sound all the time it would it would just get it would it would be a strange idea like uh um and I think yeah you get a kind of playback idea I think it would be the same thing as like seeing like a band you know just playbacking a track because. Because they're not only dancers, but they're also musicians, you know, and so, yeah. Got it. And can you imagine the same piece, but only as a, as a sound, right, without that? Yeah. Would it still, still make sense? You know, to... Um, I often get asked that question, I often get asked that question with, in relation to multimedia pieces in general, like, like what would happen if you take away one medium? Like I get asked about with, with my, with my sort of audio visual pieces with the tech stuff and also with uh, other dance pieces, like can the piece exist on its own? Um, I would say, yeah, it could, you would, you would get another thing from it. You know, like, and and sometimes you might get something rewarding by just listening. You know, or just being in a performance, closing your eyes and just listening. Um, but it wouldn't be the same thing. And uh, uh, you know, like, so you think, um, for instance, this piece. I thought about whether to release it as music only, and I decided not to because I I decided no, actually, this piece really just really exists with this kind of uh, moving element that you actually see it and experience it. So, um, but yeah, no, I mean, the, the, that question of like the, 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 what happens with multimedia works when you take away a medium, it's kind of interesting and it's never, sometimes it's surprising. Sometimes you get, you know, you, you find something else with that. Um, 
and how your collaboration with choreographer, how it shaped, right, music? It did uh, quite a lot, actually, in, in this case, because, um, you know, because in the beginning, she was saying, she was saying, look, Yanis, you write what you want, and I'll... Um, I'll change my movement language to 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 play it and then I would say no 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 but you move exactly how you want to move and I'm going to map it to the music how I think would work you know so the, so there was always this like um finding this space in between where her her the movements that she sort of had in mind would make sense with the sounds let's say the sound constellations that I had come up with. Um, so yeah, I could say that, you know, in, in some way she is also part composer in that way that, that, that she, um, she sort of shaped the, the kind of the, the, the way that the piece was played. Yeah. And how, uh, and how your collaboration with performers, how is that shaped? Uh, also, also quite a lot. Cause, cause, uh, um, because there's no like there's no like rule book about this this instrument has to be played like this, you know. Uh, I would I would watch, uh, for instance, there one case like there was um, a very subtle. I made a very subtle like uh, sound thing. What, a bit what I was talking about before about moving the sound, but also changing a bit the sort of pitch as it moved, um, and then. I came to rehearsal and I saw one of the dancers was just swinging their hand, you know, going round and round and round. And it was making an incredible sound. And it wasn't the sound that I thought they could do, but it's like, wow, this is great. You know, like, like, uh, you know, so, so it's them finding ways to, to also play the instrument was also quite inspiring. Got it. And the last question, what, um, what would you suggest, right, for composers, uh... Who would like to create uh, some dance plus music pieces, but have never did, they did it? Say it again, sorry. Do they want to create dance? A suggestion for composers who would like to create dance and yeah. music pieces, but have never done it. Right? What would be your good question? Because uh, the, um, I mean. I often find, let's say, when when musicians think about dance, that it tends to be quite one and one. Like it's it's like it's like when musicians first start to think about other medium, it's often like one to one connections. Um, so, um, and that's not often the most interesting. I mean, I'm saying this for, I mean, like this piece that we're talking about, like on mute. It's it's not necessarily a one to one relationship. There's many sort of uh, things in between, and uh, what I mean by one to one is is uh, the way of translating, let's say, musical ideas directly into movement. Um, it's, it's better, actually. I th I think um, get experience of uh, in the dance world, like see how dancers and 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 um, and and choreographers think. Or how theater people think, because uh, same with with film, you know, like it's um, you don't have to be you don't have to become an expert filmmaker or an expert choreographer, right? but you have to understand a bit the the discourse and what's going on in that artistic field to get a sort of sensitivity about you know what you can do as a composer. Because I think composers or coming from sound or music, we have a specific sensibility and maybe even a specific way of dealing with uh, time structures and um, uh, and, co and the idea of composition. That that's actually you know that gives us a uh, you know quite a a good um, let's say insight or depth into what can happen in in a sort of dramaturgy in a sort of uh, time-based medium like dance uh, often I find dancers or choreographers are uh, um, look up to composers in the way they can sort of think of you know like larger scale form but I think like um, to deal with the sort of uh, intricacies and the detail of actual movement I think you need to have uh, some experiences with with 
choreographers and dancers before you sort of ha maybe have your own ideas about it. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Sandris. Yeah, it was good. Like, uh, curious. So, and what? Who else are you interviewing then? 